Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jax and this is going to be my Q&A video. So as some of you may know, I put out a little call for questions a while ago and it's taken me absolutely just ages to get this uh, Q&A video up and ready. I actually had this plan initially where I would take the camera out and do a little vlog as well and I'll be, you know, appearing on camera and we were going to go to this super nice restaurant where they were doing like a five course dessert degustation and I'll be like eating and talking and answering questions at the same time in front of the camera and it was just gonna be super cool but then upon reviewing the footage it was just not great um the noise was really bad there was a little kitchen noise in the background and also just like music playing and I don't want to you know get booked for copyright or anything we're just gonna record it again and it's just gonna be me talking to the camera but you're not gonna see me because you know what my face isn't that exciting you know what's more exciting more art. I'm going to combine this with something that's been quite requested, which is videos of me going through my art process but not having it sped up. Whilst you're listening to me talk, I'm going to have this one hour clip that I'm just sped up to about twice speed, because you know, we need a bit of speed there, otherwise it's going to be way too slow, of this drawing that I started a few weeks ago. So this is just a completely original piece. It has a bit of an interesting story. The, uh, the general idea of it came to me at night and then I just like woke up from my feverish half sleep and I had to like scribble it down. Uh, the colours were just so vivid in my imagination. I really wanted something like just with really deep turquoises and some really nice contrasting oranges. And so the colouring process for this specific piece just took an absolute age. So I really wanted to lay down the colours as correctly and as accurately as possible to begin with because I find when you don't lay down the colours like what you think they should look like then you can sometimes run into a lot of trouble as you continue on with the drawing because it's just like it kind of continues down the path that you set for it in the very beginning and sometimes it just can end up looking completely different from what you had in mind. So another thing people are generally quite interested in is um, how I actually pick and choose my colours. So in this video with it slowed down you can actually see me going through the process of uh, playing around with all the different kinds of colors and I think by the end of the hour I had a pretty well established base color and then the actual final speed paint for this piece I actually haven't finished this piece as of recording this uh, voiceover right now but the speed paint for the final finished piece will probably be coming out next Monday in my regular uh, uploady speed paint time so without further ado, I've already rambled on for way too long, sorry about that. Uh, let's get started with the Q&A. So one of the first questions I got a lot of is, how long have I been drawing for? So I've been drawing since I started high school, which was like way back in 2007. I was around 13 and that was when I got my first digital tablet, which was like a Wacom bamboo. It was like super thick and had a really, really thick tubular pen. Um, and my, I think my first program was the program that came with it, which was Photoshop Elements. I actually put up a picture here of one of my first digital drawings. This was one that I did fully digitally, so I think I made the transition slowly from traditional to digital art by like sketching first and then kind of trying to scan it using my really old printer and then colouring. Uh, but then eventually I just kind of shifted to make it completely digital because I think it was just more efficient that way. Uh, this is one of my very very first characters. I think her name was a galaxy. She was a sweet talk on an amazing site called Neopets, which I'm, which I'm sure all of you would have heard of. It was just like the coolest thing back in my day and I used to just make like tons and tons of characters based on the pets of that site. So she was my, she was one of my very first and still has a very special place in my heart even though she doesn't really exist anymore. So yeah, I've been drawing for around 10 years now. Um, so if you know, do the calculations, I am 23 at the moment. Um, and yeah. The next question comes from Crankle Cat. Why did you get Medibang and will you use it forever? I can't guarantee I will use Medibang forever. I came across Medibang about one and a half years ago and I actually came across Fire Alpaca first, which is, uh, 
a program produced by the same company but it's like slightly lighter than Medibang itself. And the reason why I picked it up is because my desktop computer at the time got like a, this awful virus and I just could not use it for a while. And I ended up purchasing a MacBook Pro. And the problem was I was using Paint All Sci at the time and Paint, um, Sci just doesn't really work well on Macs and it didn't calibrate well with my tablet I think as well like um, pressure sensitivity just didn't work in pencil sight at all so that pretty much just made it completely unusable so then I was just kind of on the market looking around for a program that was you know preferably free or at least cheap that I could like you know use in the meantime as you know things got sorted out um, I think I started, I think I tried to use GIMP at first and it was just like the user interface was so bad that I just, I just kind of lost faith in the ability to produce art for a while. Um, but then eventually came the saving grace that was Fire Alpaca and later Medibang, which I thought had like a user interface that was just like super close to Photoshop and I just picked it up right away and it was super easy to use and I was like, oh yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. So you know, this is my little origin story with Medibang and I still I still really love it and I still love how it's so connected with the current developers of the program so that you know regularly you'll get updates and new features which is just super cool. It shows that you know they're still you know maintaining the program and caring for it and adding new things um, and they're not just going to ditch it forever and you'll know, just, just never get any upgrades. So yeah, Medibang definitely sticking with it for the meantime, I don't have any reasons to change at the moment, but I'm always like, I always love testing out new programs, so it's definitely something I'll look into in the future. The next question comes from Sarah S. How did you come up with Clockbirds and what does it mean? So uh, I think I've had the name Clockbirds since around 2014. Uh, it was basically, came, I just came up with it this one afternoon after I came home from school and I had a friend visiting and she was like, you should make a Tumblr. And at that stage, I just wasn't really on too many different social media. I did have like DeviantArt accounts back then, but then um, I just kind of like deleted all of them and I just didn't go onto social media for like quite some time and I didn't post my art online for quite a period. Uh, but then I knew Tumblr was pretty, you know, it was still in its heydays back then. Well, not really, 2014. I don't know, but <laughs> people were still using it. She was still using it and she was like, yeah, you know, you should make a Tumblr. And I was like, oh no, but now I need a username and and you know how like, you know, sometimes you find a username and you kind of just like stick with it across a lot of different social media. And I used to have this, but then since I, you know, deleted all those accounts, I couldn't use those anymore. So now this was like a brand new fresh start and I was like, oh, I need a, I need a new username. It's like, what, what could it possibly be? It was like, this is so important. Obviously, I did not realize how important it would end up being because I didn't realize I would, I would start, you know, making accounts across all these different social media using that exact same username and it would become, like, I guess, so well known if I can even say that. But, um, yeah, so that afternoon I was like, well, I guess I'll just combine the two things I like and I just looked around. I had birds, pet birds at the time. It's like, I like birds. Birds are cool. Birds are amazing. So I was just like, yes, no, put birds in it. And then what can I put in front of birds? And I was like, oh, I like watches and clocks. They are very pretty. Therefore, clocks. Bird clocks, clock birds. That's a good name. Okay, next question comes from May, which basically asks, what canvas size do you usually use? So I get this question a lot and usually like on every single video I put out, people are always asking, oh, what's your canvas size? Um, there's actually a really, really easy way to check exactly the canvas size I use. Usually when I answer, I just kind of give a rough approximation, but there is a way to know for each piece uh, what canvas size I was using to draw for that piece. And basically if you look at any of my speed paints, uh, on the bottom, right underneath the brushes, there's an area which basically says, 1300 by whatever pixels times whatever pixels and then also the resolution for it so you know if you ever need to know the camera size it's actually right there in the video it's very small so it's understandable people will miss it but like it's yeah it's it's there so you can go you can for future reference you can you can look at that okay so the next question i got quite a few of was uh do i have any pets and at the moment i do not unfortunately I have had a life where I would have constant periods of owning and looking after certain different types of pets. So I think my first love was like budgies, I had them for a while, and then I moved on to rabbits for a while, and then guinea pigs, and then in the last few years I had um, 
some cockatiels and an Indian redneck parrot and they stayed with us for a while but then we ended up giving them away. So yeah, no, I've had a lot of pets in the past. I do absolutely love, love birds so much. So if I do get another, get a chance to own another pet in the future, I would definitely love um, one of the bigger parrots. They're just like, oh, they're just so sassy and amazing and I love them so much. So I would love to have one of them. Um, or, or, or dog. Dogs are cool too. I like dogs. Okay. Abby S asks, uh, you're half Chinese, so what's your other half? Um, yeah, so I said in a uh, video a while ago, I think it was the video where I, um, I think it was the speed paint of Lantern, which I painted the, uh, a dog bringing in Lantern, and it was like kind of like a little thing to celebrate the coming of Lunar New Year. And yeah, in the video I mentioned that I was half Chinese, and my other half is Thai. I actually have a really, really long, weird Thai last name. Obviously, Jack Sheridan. Not my real name. Hmm. So yeah, I'm half Thai, half Chinese. The Mirror of Logs asks, uh, how many OCs do you have and what are their names? I have four OCs in total at the moment. Uh, so I'll put all their references up on the screen. Feel free to draw them if you want to. I love them very much and I will love you forever. Um, so their names are Sion, Luke, Enfia and Iluima. Um, and basically they were all initially based off of Neopets. Pretty much all my OCs ever have been based off of Neopets because that site just kind of consumed my life for a decent chunk <laughs> of my kind of OC creation period. And I've just kind of kept them and adapted their designs over their years. So they're not really any like tied anymore to the Neopet species that they came from, but they're kind of they're just like their own separate characters in their own random little universe. The Rosie Apple asks, do you listen to music when drawing? If so, can you list some? Okay, so I don't actually listen to too much music. I'm not much of a music person, dare I say. Uh, I guess I never really connected too much with music, although I did have a period, I think maybe in 2008 to 2010, where I was like really, really into listening to the top 40s. I listened to it every time I was drawing, so it kind of really became associated with the drawing process. So I actually do have like a little playlist that I made on YouTube that's like compiled all the songs from the like 2005 to 2012 period and I'll sometimes go back to that little playlist and just kind of relive the nostalgia because it just kind of brings back memories of like when I was in high school. I'd like just come out of the shower and I'll put those top 40s hits on and then I'll start drawing and I can smell the shampoo in my hair and it's like, yeah, strong, strong, strong memories. Aside from that, I actually listen to a lot of podcasts. One of the ones I finished re listening to recently, um, so I like gone through the entire back catalogue in about three months or something, is Hello Internet, which is hosted by two YouTubers. And yeah, I just really love their banter and their, um, their conversations and they're just like, it's a, it's a really great great entertainment podcasts and also to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I just like having a bunch on in the background, even though I'm not like watching some of them really. I just like having that kind of background noise playing. That's also, that's also really, really pleasant. Margarita asks, favorite food? Hmm. Yeah, I really like desserts and cakes and donuts and all the really, really sweet stuff. So yeah, I'm an absolute sugar junkie. It is not good for the arteries or the waistline, but I need dessert after like every single meal, including breakfast and lunch. It's like dessert, any time is dessert time. Therefore I shall eat all the cakes and sugar I can eat in the world. So yeah, I really like sweet food. And again, check out Instagram. Okay, quite a few people asked uh, who my favorite artists are or my main inspirations. So, I guess since I've been drawing for quite a long time and, you know, been on this game for quite a long time, my inspirations have definitely changed a lot over the different years. So I think when I, back when I was, you know, smaller, um, it was usually like all the senior artists who were like on the Neopet forums, I'm just like, oh, you guys draw these weird creatures so amazingly, I, I must look, I look up to you so much. Um, obviously that's changed now. Uh, I guess at the moment, I really love a bunch of different environment, kind of landscape, artists. I can't remember too many of the names or I don't want to say them because I'll probably get them wrong but when I'm editing this video I shall put a bunch of their names on the screen right now just 
people who do amazing things with color or just create landscapes that just feel really really vast and magical and amazing um, those are my biggest inspirations at the moment lightning wing sky asks do you like cheese i love cheese i'm already on yt how did you find your style okay so style is something that is very very near and dear and close to my heart and has always just been on my mind so much I guess most artists or just a lot of us just go through this phase where we're just so obsessed about style and wanting to find something that allow others to identify our art and our signature it's definitely a really easy mindset to fall into when you're starting art because that's what you see successful artists that's what they all have they all have something that makes their art really really distinct and you just think well in order to be like them and become successful i need to find my niche and start just drawing in that one specific style and then you know become known for it that way which you know it's a tactic that you can approach art from but it's just it's definitely not a very organic tactic to do it in and i can think it can actually be quite detrimental if you try to push it too hard when you just start out. Okay, so for years I tried and tried to just like find a style and stick with it. And I realized over time that that process just never really stuck with me. Um, every time I kind of found something that kind of was like, potentially this could be my style, I tried to, you know, just, just draw in that style for a week or so and then just so fast I would get bored and I'll be like what is this this is not a style it's like I'm not having fun at all doing this it's like I can't keep doing this and so I've never really had a style I made this post on DeviantArt maybe about a year ago and it basically compared um these two dragons so my, one of my characters Emphia uh drawn a year ago and then that time last year and it basically showed I didn't really have a particularly set style for, you know, drawing eyes and drawing faces, or like drawing feet. I guess this was like an interesting insight to come to, um, because then it kind of just softened my focus of thinking, well, style is not, not the, you know, it's not the way I just, you know, draw eyes or draw faces. And it's like, it can be, but for me, it, it just wasn't. I think people generally recognize my work now by the environments and the different tones and colors and textures and that's kind of become my style which is pretty cool. Another thing I think is really problematic is like just setting something out as your style from a really really early stage and then not being willing to explore anything new. So I guess initially when I first started I was very much into the clean line art, clean shading kind of style. So you can see in a lot of my old works, uh, it's always like just really focused on making crisp line art and just kind of like, you know, doing that base layer and then, you know, doing the you know markings or whatever. And then you create a layer on top, set the opacity low and then change the little blending mode to multiply and then you like start stroking in the shadows. I was very much in that kind of style because I was very much inspired by that kind of very clean, crisp anime and Japanese um, aesthetic with those you know those really crisp lines and beautiful colors which I still really really admire but then I just realized over time it was just not something I found particularly intuitive artistically so the entire process of like setting down the line art first and then coloring it it was just like it didn't allow for easy changes to be made after you set the line art down and I always found that like once I've drawn a line art it would be like it was like a countdown that I could complete the coloring before I start noticing errors in the line art and then you know you had to go back and change the line art and you had to change the coloring and shading on top of that and that was just like that entire process is just ridiculously annoying and inefficient and then um, as soon as I picked up this kind of more painting and just like directly applying things onto the canvas without having to consider line art um, the entire process just became so much more easy and it was so much easier to correct for mistakes and things like that without and just doing it everything on a single layer without having to concern myself with like organizing just an entire mass of layers like my previous works where i did line art there were so many layers like different layers were shading and then highlights and then lighting and then markings and it's just like it was just insane it was like a mass of layers 
But now it's like I can get one character done on a single layer, no problem. And it's just so much easier. And I felt like if I really just stuck with that line art style that I was just like kind of caging myself in and I'm so glad I kind of like branched out and decided to explore like line art lists at first. At first it was like an experiment and I was not good at it at all and it was just like an entire new learning curve that I had to kind of go through again. It was actually really really discouraging because I think I started doing that about in 2016 and that was like I had been using the line art base color um, kind of technique style for such a long time and then kind of reverting back and having to relearn how to do the more painterly stuff was just like a completely new thing and I was like oh now I'm like starting from the bottom and kind of had to build my skills up again you know learn something that I should have learned a long time ago if I had just found a style to begin with but you know you can't concern yourself too much with that if you um, how long it takes you to learn it shouldn't matter if it actually clicks with you and it ended up working out really well for me um, when I just kind of ditched the whole line arty clean style and went with the painting like I felt my learning improved so dramatically and it was just and the speed at which I was able to finish works and push them out in their fully completed form just increased as well this kind of almost very late stage change in the way I um, approached art and approached my process in art it was annoying that it was so late but at the end it was very much worth it and I don't think I could have gotten there if I was so you know just hard set on pursuing a singular style and thinking well I've done it for so long now it would just be a waste of time if I tried to do something else explore as many styles as you can and you never know which ones might pay off in the future okay Daniel arrive asks why do you prefer drawing animals than humans? Yeah, humans are hard for me to draw. I don't know why. Animals are just easier. <laughs> I like animals. Yeah, I have just I just have a really hard time drawing humans for some reason. Um, I think, and also it's because I just don't like people that much. I am very much an introvert by nature, and I tend to really have this terrible habit of just avoiding eye contact whenever I talk to people, which is something I really need to work on. Um, but so I just like, and because of that, I just don't look at humans too much and I just feel really uncomfortable drawing them. And I'm just like, yeah, no, nope, animals. Animals are good. I will stick to drawing animals. Ember Fox Art on Tumblr asks, uh, how long have you been doing commissions for slash working for money? I actually haven't been doing art for money for a particularly long time. I used to do, you know, really small-ish style commissions back, you know, in maybe like 2008, 2009 when I had a deviant art and I was like earning little amounts of points and stuff for it. But it was like those, you know, it was like a minuscule amount of money. And then I just kind of like, you know, stopped doing them at all because, you know, they just weren't really worth the time and my heart really wasn't that good. So I'm not really even sure why people were buying art back then. I think it's just like Oh yes, let's, let's buy art from friends. That seems like a fun thing to do. Anyway, and then I think I only recently started maybe in 2016. I think that's when I re finally released my official commission sheet with my little, you know, headshots and um, my little illustrations and stuff. And then I've pretty much just been slowly working through batches of commissions since the beginning. And I've been reviewing my prices maybe at a half yearly basis ever since then. So that's how long I've been doing commissioned art. I haven't really sold art in any other ways so far. Although I did just launch um, some stores. So Imprint, which I applied for um, a few days ago and I've now just put up a few little artworks that you can buy as prints and art cards on there. Um, and also Redbubble. So again, same things with like, you know, um, posters and art prints, also like uh, a couple of other weird miscellaneous products like, you know, bags as well. Uh, if you want the, you know, if you want my art on any other products, let me know and I, I can see if I can, you know, um, make that feature happen on Redbubble. But yeah, I'm definitely, I really want to officially launch a print art store for people who would like to buy some of my work, which would be really, really nice. But I'm still in the process of organizing all of that at the moment. But hopefully very soon. Also hopefully Patreon very soon. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what we can set up in the future. Maybe by the end of March? I think by the end of March. Okay, hold me to it. 
I'll have it all set up by the end of March and hopefully get it all get it all under control. Okay, uh, another question I got a ton of asks for is um, am I self-taught or did I go to art school? So yeah, the whole art school question I feel like is also just a very trendy topic, especially for people coming out of high school and stuff at the moment, um, considering whether they should go to art school or not. I don't have any huge opinions regarding that because I never gone to art school. I really don't know what they offer. I'm sure there are art schools around where I live, but I yeah, I've never really checked them out. It's never really been an option for me. I am currently um, finishing my PhD in psychology. Technically, my thesis is a bit related to art. I study aesthetics and, you know, things that make us see things as beautiful. Something it's like something along those lines. I won't go too in depth into it. But I don't know. If you want to hear more about my um, research, I'm happy to make a video about it at some point. So yeah, that's what I'm studying for. At the moment, no art school for me. I did take a few, like, you know, small art classes when I was younger, but nothing, you know, too intense, nothing official. It was just like those really small art classes in the shopping centers where I just go and copy from a, like, a, a someone else's paintings, or like at school where it was like they made us make sculptures of Wookiee monsters or something. I don't know. I didn't stick around too much for those, but. Uh, everything I learned to do, I pretty much learned to do on my own because I just love drawing and I love art and I love improving. It's like having that kind of learning mindset and kind of self-improvement mindset really helps and you just kind of have to find a passion for what you do and, you know, keep at it. Okay, I think I only have time for one last question, so let's see. Um, what tips or suggestions would you give beginning artists who want to do a digital painting? What has helped you the most with art slash painting? Okay, so tips, tips. So aside from, you know, practice, try to practice, they all say that. Everyone says that. Practice every day and you'll eventually get good at it. And that's what I'm also going to say because it is true. Uh, you don't have to do it every day. I only got into the habit of drawing every day really, really recently. So maybe around since Inktober last year when I actually was drawing every day and then I just kind of, I just couldn't kick the habit. It just somehow got into me that I was like, oh, that showed I could draw every day. So therefore I don't have excuse to not be drawing every day. So therefore I should be drawing every day. So that has really helped. But use references. References are super, super important. Do not be ashamed to use references. Uh, for such a long time, I would just like, I had this weird internal stigma like, oh, you, you can't be a true artist if you're using references. Like clearly you should just be able to replicate all this bit, all these bits of anatomy and perspective from your own mind. It's like, well, so using references will really, really help you. Um, if you need to trace over things, obviously if you're tracing something, don't post it online, don't claim it as your own, just keep it to yourself. Use it as practice. Do everything you can to take works from the people you admire and just really analyze it, dig deep, copy, trace, whatever. Just do that to narrow down specifically what it is they're doing that you like and you want to you want as part of your own artistic process or your own artistic style and just keep doing that. And my final tip is learn what the full capabilities are of your program of your drawing program whether you're using photoshop or medibang or paint or Sci, all art programs have these you know various features that you might not know like you know you have the basics like the brush and the eraser tool but there's you know all the selection tools and the blending modes and all these other features that might surprise you that the art program actually comes with and i think you should do your best to learn what those are and to maximize the potential gain from whatever art program that you are using and that will really help you. For example, with Medibang, I'm not sure how many people know about the blending mode options like the multiply and the overlay layers, but they are like absolutely integral in helping me decide on the colors I'm applying and helping me with lighting and with shading and applying down the base colors before I start going in with the painting process. And pretty much all decent art programs have those blending mode functions and you just need to do a YouTube search like Photoshop blending modes or just blending modes and 
people will just go through an in-depth kind of explanation on how each of the blending modes work and just knowing those and how you can use them to make your drawing process more efficient and more easy and work for you is probably one of the most helpful things I found as an artist just if you have a program just see what you can do to learn as much about it as possible and that will just really maximize what you can actually achieve with it and how it can help you better your final results okay so uh not sure how long this video is going to turn out hopefully not too long i did ramble on for a bit didn't i <laughs> thank you so much for sending in some of those questions i really helped there my answers were at least somewhat helpful especially to the more in-depth art ones i actually did do a little interview with a podcast called the art side of life um a few weeks ago um, but the interview won't be coming out for quite a while but when it does i will link it and you guys can go watch it it was a really really good interview and they asked me a tons of questions about you know how i came to be the artist i um, I guess and also like my current artistic process and you know the rituals I do to you know get into the mood of drawing and stuff like that so that was actually really really cool but yeah I might do more of these videos in the future if I have if people want to ask more questions and stuff that would also be really cool and I have also you know so many plans of what I want to put on this channel in the future as well but we'll see whether those come to fruition um, Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, uh, subscribe if you want to see more art tutorials and speed paints, and also just follow me on DeviantArt and Tumblr and Twitter and Instagram and all the other relevant social media because numbers make me happy. Don't we all love big numbers? Yay! Anyway, see you guys next time. Bye!